Zach's Rank Buys starts with a short-term buy or strong buy recommendation. Now, here are more Zach's Rank Buys. So I was sitting around thinking, you know, we haven't done value stocks in a long time. And so I called Tracy Ryan, who's our value stock analyst at Zax.com, told her to get down here with a couple of selections for us. And that's exactly what she did. <laughs> but she brought a couple of real esoteric names here, and that is putting it mildly, believe me. Uh, the first one, Steve Madden Limited, S-H-O-O is the ticker symbol. That should give you a little bit of a tip-off as to what they do. Yes. Uh, they manufacture shoes and accessories for men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised, Terry, that you you know don't shop there and go, go into their trendy styles. Don't be surprised. I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the thing about them right now. They're actually doing pretty well because they are on the cheaper end of the trendy styles. So you know, if you're going to kind of go down in brands, Steve Madden is a good one to go to because you can still get everything that's up to date, but at the lower price. So they're doing really well right now. This last quarter, they saw sales increase 6.9% across the board. And uh, for their retail stores, because they own both retail and also they are in department stores and specialty retail stores, mm -hmm. they uh, had sales at their own stores up 7.6%, which is pretty stunning given everything that's kind of happening out there in the retail sector. So, you know, their fundamentals are good. Um, they did a beat on estimates. And um, they reaffirmed guidance. They did say that the rest of the year they could see sales down overall for the year, zero to two percent. But again, give, given what's happening in the economy, that's not that bad for a retailer. Um, the consensus estimates are, are rising because they reaffirmed. So you know, fundamentals are good. Their stock has soared since the March um, lows. It's at close to new 52-week high. It was at 52-week high at the end of April, and pulled back a little bit, and now is surging again. Um, but the fundamentals aren't so bad in terms of value. They're still trading about 13.9 times, which isn't super expensive given everything that's done with the stock. Mm -hmm. um, but I would watch it if it you know, keeps doing what it's doing. It won't be a value stock much longer, let's put it that way. But right now, if things look good for, for shoe. Okay. You know, here's <laughs> another one I don't shop at. <laughs> Fuki International, f u. QI, I yes. believe, the ticker symbol. I don't know where she did these things <laughs> like that, but tell us about this one. Uh, they're a specialty uh, jeweler retailer in China, actually, so that could be why you That's don't shop it probably now. one reason, yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen them on your trips abroad. Um, but they do upper end. So unlike Steve Madden, they're doing the upper end, which apparently in China is holding up quite well. They're, they also are seeing sales um, hold up and and surge actually in both their wholesale, which is their big division. So they're selling their um, designs out to various stores, but they also have a retail component that they're growing because the margins are better in the retail side for them. And they saw revenues up 41% in the quarter. So they didn't come out and say that the high end jewelers are recession proof in China, but they are not getting hit. So for whatever reason, the upscale. Um, buyers are still buying in China, and uh, you know the the numbers look great for Fuki. I have to say, um, they they beat estimates for the fourth quarter in a row, and then they also raised guidance for the year quite sharply. In fact, about twenty five cents, I think, a share. So that's you know, again, given everything that's going on out there, that's kind of surprising. And um, you know, the stock has soared, um, just like to it's come off those um, lows, and then it's it's. Um, well, it's gone into the stratosphere, but the stock isn't altogether that expensive, which is why it's still in the value category. It's still trading at 7.8 times forward estimates, and that's not that bad. Um, the growth is there. Analysts expect about 24% year-over-year growth. So the peg ratio is really low. I would, again, be a little cautious if it keeps running like this. Right now, the Chinese stocks are in big demand. Everybody thinks that, that China is going to be the first kind of to come out of the recession. So a lot of oh. the Chinese stocks are hot. So, but they have the numbers to back it up and they have, you know, their earnings right now. So. I knew there was a reason why you picked names like this, <laughs> other than the fact that you might be drinking too much. Right. Uh, <laughs> do you own either of these two? I do not. All right. Well, if you want more details on these two companies and others in the value category that Tracy has written about recently, get over to Zacks.com's homepage, look over in that upper right-hand corner and click on the headline that's next to the value listing. With Tracy Reinick, I'm Terry Ruffalo.